You read a new study and you change your whole training style and <laughs> facts <laughs> until a new article drops and then you change it again. Okay, so this is so goddamn true. Here's the thing. One study at a time says almost nothing. All the studies together and physiological anatomical rationale that we've known for like a hundred years and how it works in the real world on yourself, for other people, for their coaches, so on and so forth. That whole thing is evidence-based training and it's super valid. If you are changing your shit every other week based on a new study, you're hashtag science-based and not actually science-based. And there's a huge difference. Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for RP Strength. I'm a former professor of exercise and sports science, competitive bodybuilder, Brazilian jiu-jitsu grappler, and somewhat of a kind of fake authority on things revolving around lifting. But I know of a real authority, an original, a god, a titan, no, not Darwin, not Einstein, Mr. Dom Mazzetti who I learned so much from as a child that now we're gonna go back and check out real bro science insights and see how scientific they are and how insightful they are. Three, two, one, <sighs> out of here. Science-based lifting is a scam by big science to get you to do more <laughs> science and less lifting. The whole reason we started lifting is because we were bullied for being nerds. Facts. Oddly close to home, continue please. We didn't go to the gym to stay nerds. We go to the gym so we can bully other nerds. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that is a photo. Yikes. You're telling me all I have to do to feel better about myself is make someone feel worse about themselves? Where do I sign up? <laughs> now these nerds are trying to pull a fucking fast one on us. If I were a nerd, I wouldn't be teaching my bullies how to get bigger than me. I'd be tricking them into being smaller by reading. <laughs> There's good news here. The bullies pretty much never do science-based lifting. The nerds gravitate to science-based lifting. So if you do science-based lifting and advocate it on the internet like Mr. Jeff Nipper does, the nerds get more jacked and be, are able to defend themselves more from the bullies. And the bullies typically are like anti-science-based lifting because honestly, they're just dumber and science has always been confusing because they were dumber when they were younger too. And so actually, if you do science-based lifting and you promulgate it on the internet, you're beefing up the nerds and it doesn't really help the bullies because quite frankly, they just don't do the reading and the science thing all that well. And they're proud of it too. <laughs> oh man. Scott, do you ever look at some of the elaborate setups like the science sciencey lifting has and you're like, number one, I don't want to set that up. I'm too fucking lazy. Number two is like, it, it's so awkward that you spend more of your time trying to figure out how you're going to strap into the grips than actually lifting the fucking weight all that. Yeah, this is going to be sick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this stretch is fucking crazy, dude. <laughs> Fuck that engagement. <laughs> uh, it'd be nice if we had another one of these over here, though. You read a new study and you change your whole training style and <laughs> facts <laughs> and identity until a new article drops contradicting it and then you change it again. <laughs> okay, so this is so goddamn true. Here's the thing. Science-based lifting isn't just reading PubMed studies or abstracts or titles. Let's be honest, everyone's just reading the title and then changing your training based on doing that. Now, lots of people do that. They're not doing it right. Science-based lifting means they integrate real studies into physiological and anatomical understanding, into practical experience that you have with yourself, into the wisdom other coaches and athletes have also shared all together in one big goop of insight. And when that goop has a few more studies in it, it has to basically check the box of, well, what is my own personal experience? What is the physiological rationale? How do other athletes respond? And only then is it intelligent to really upgrade your training. So the Dom is onto some 
100% valid shit here. A lot of people do change their training, sometimes every week based on the new study. That is not science-based lifting. Obviously, Dom is a comedian, hilarious shit, but like for real, for real, there's a grain of truth there where some people do change the shit all the time and then they yell you, yell about it in the comments to you, like, well, this isn't science-based. Haven't you seen that one recent study? One study at a time says almost nothing. If you take all the studies together and physiological anatomical rationale that we've known for like 100 years and how it works in the real world on yourself, on your athletes, for other people, for their coaches, so on and so forth. That whole thing is evidence-based training and it's super valid. And so if a new study comes out, you pretty much never go up, oh, that's what I'm doing, go oh, interesting. Let's see if a few more studies can replicate the study and then I'll change my training on the margins to reflect this new discovery of reality. If you are changing your shit every other week based on a new study, you're hashtag science-based and not actually science-based. And there's a huge difference. Length in partials? <laughs> you mean half reps? These <laughs> nerds out here really trying to rebrand half reps? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> so First of all, yes. Second of all, length and partials are a specific kind of half rep. It's the length and part. A lot of bros won't do length and partials because they hurt a lot and they stretch you. Bros don't do that shit. Bros do medium range partials, just like right in the middle here, or top end partials so they can use a lot of weight. The two wrongest kind of partials that you can do. So yeah, bottom uh, end partials, length and partials really are scientifically valid and really will make you jacked. But uh, yeah, bros can't take credit for that one because you've been doing it wrong. Oh, but it's the harder half. Yeah, but it's still half, which means the job's not done. <laughs> That's right. We ain't doing work. <laughs> I love it. If you spent as much time lifting all the weight as you did figuring out how to lift half of it, you'd be twice as big. <laughs> and that math works. The math somehow yeah. works. These science-based nerds have to speak their truth like some science justice warrior. Why do you care so much? Why would you want to help me get bigger than you? It's <laughs> Uh, it is really is dog eat dog out there, isn't it? Like if I see you at the gym making gains, th those could be my gains, you know? That's really the thing, Scott. I, I think I think we've hit a fundamental like philosophical economic point. If someone has a lot of money and you take it, you have a lot of money. But you can't take anyone's gains, can you? Or can you? It's because you want to be right and me to be wrong. Because if I get bigger doing it wrong, that means the exercise ain't the problem you are. And there is no amount of science that can make up for your shitty genetics or lack of work ethic. Facts. I saying, I think science-based lifters have more work ethic than non-science-based lifters, mostly because they're just more conscientious people that succeed at everything, including school and work and life and science-based lifting too. Question, what's the most amount of weight you can move the least amount of distance? The, the most important question for ego lifting. Pull sumo to find out. Ha! Attract a lot of attention, grab yes. some chalk. Yes. Ha! 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 <gasps> Stomp around. Yes. Okay, get everybody looking at you. you. Yes, you also have to do the thing. Back in the day, we used to wear powerlifting equipment, these super, super tight suits that would the straps would pull you down and kind of cave you over. So what you did before deadlifting was you would raise your arms to kind of get the, the straps to kind of sag back a little bit and, and give you some relief. Scott, I've seen natural lifter, or not natural, good God, unequipped lifters with just singlets on or just t-shirts do the strap pull as a, a practice for sumo. <laughs> oh, You're cosplaying. Yeah, <laughs> Nothing you're doing is real, but it sure shit gets people looking at you. And uh, Dom says, people looking at you, I was gonna say it's half the battle, but is it really? I think it's probably most of the battle. You max right here, grab the bar over under. Okay, fact. Dom is very flexible and has an excellent super sumo setup. This is really good stuff. I can't even get into this position. And then squeeze your pussy lips together. Ah, ah. Going sumo is like dunking on an eight foot rim, but swaying it's 10 feet. The jokes are amazing, but let's clear something up. Every single person that has a problem with pulling sumo is making an excuse for why someone pulled sumo more than they could pull in any style, including sumo, I might add. Yeah, I mean, I could deadlift 800. I just won't want to do that weird sumo shit. Shut the fuck up. No, you can't. You're making excuse after excuse after excuse. Scott, I don't know if you were around for this. There was a meme going around. And by meme, I mean like something people said until it wasn't funny and then until it really wasn't funny and until people forgot about it, but they still said it. It was like sumo lifters eat ass. Do you remember that one? I don't. 
That's for the best. And it was like all over the internet in like 2015. And I, there's two parts of it I didn't understand. One is the hate on sumo, which is nonsense. The other is what the fuck is wrong with eating ass? Folks, there's still more video to come, but if you want an extended version of this video, tons of other ultra nerdy content, tons of training logs, our member section is amazing. Give it a click, show up, subscribe. It's not a ton of money, it's great value. All right, back to the video. Speaking of cheating, cheat curls. Do not use the fixed bars. Fixed bars are the equivalent of adult braces. Use a barbell, not only to establish a six foot blast radius, yes. but to take the bar from someone who's using it so they have no choice but to watch you curl until you're done. I like how he side eyes the guy. The best is when you have like eight people wanting to use a power rack and you got a guy in there doing like just curls and you're like, oh, you could have just taken that barbell out of the rack. It would have been great. There's plenty of barbells. Gotta be that guy. Personal trainers are the biggest drain on society. <laughs> Truth. That applies to more personal trainers than anyone cares to admit. Personal training is food stamps for fat people. Why <laughs> are you trying to help people who won't help themselves? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Fitness is about hating yourself until you build a burning drive to overcompensate for everything in your life using the gym. <laughs> You know, Scott, there are people who are unaware that they actually feel this way that'll get really pissed in comment sections. Like, they'll be like, someone's like, I'm using Ozempic to lose weight. And they're like, you're not earning it, man. You're like, are you going to be okay? okay? Do you need a hug? Is there something unearned in life that you're struggling with? Yo, real talk, though, personal training is phenomenal because it helps people who just don't know much or don't have the requisite motivation to really get after it, outsource that, and get in amazing shape. Personal training is amazing. However... There is a subcategory of client of personal training, which I'm not a big fan of, all love and respect. It's a tiny fraction, but these clients are real and you might've had them before. Clients that expect the personal trainer to somehow give them every ounce of their motivation. And so they bring zero motivation or interest to the equation. I've had clients who 12 weeks into a program don't know how to lift at all because they're actively trying not to remember anything you say. They want you to just tell them up, down, move like this, move like that, go, go, go. They do it. And as soon as they're done, they're just, their brain erases all of that data. They want zero ownership over their lifting. And you're saying like, what about when they go on vacation? They just don't lift. What about when you're out of town? They don't lift. And as soon as you're out of their lives, they don't lift. There's like a type of person who wants nothing to do with lifting other than a trainer making them do it. Here's the problem. You can't make someone do something they don't actively really want to do. And when the weight gets heavy and the weight gets hard and the reps get really high, people quit. These people quit way before any of that. So even though you are having them do the movements in the gym, they suck at the movements because they're never trying to learn. Imagine every every single squat set you do is really kind of your first set ever because you just never bothered to learn. And you're barely trying. These are the kinds of people that will tell their friends like, oh, I can't gain any muscle or I can't lose any weight. And they're like, do you train? They're like, I train three times with a trainer. Shut up, Betsy. I've seen you train with your trainer. It's mostly your trainer doing the work and you just have a load of excuses. If your attitude as soon as you walk in to the gym is, oh, I just have to survive this until I can get the fuck out of here, you're not going to make your best gains by a long shot. And guess who you have to blame for that? A mirror. The mirror is the problem. Go look at it and blame the physical mirror itself. This cannot be taught. It has to be learned. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh, muscle ups. Yeah, sure, it looks impressive, but trust me, nobody cares as much as you wish they did. Muscle ups don't actually take that much muscle or strength. It's mostly just technique and podcasts about semen retention. Yes. Yes. My God, Scott, he hit a real demographic yes, with that. 100%. What you want to do is do odd lifts that no one else does so that you don't have to compare yourself to anyone else and find out that you're not that strong. You get really good at some weird, strange, esoteric lifts. You establish those as the core lifts for functional human health, and you 100% do heat, ice, Graston techniques, all that shit, bands, uh, and you, you have a discount code for natural supplements. You're that guy. 
Mike, I bet you can't match me because I can do a Turkish get up with 75 pounds for 13 reps. Does that make you the world's strongest man? Is that good? Or the yeah. strongest man of all time? Yeah, I don't. <laughs> Smaller you are, the easier it is actually. Fun fact, True. the strongest part about a muscle up is the strength it takes to die a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> it does take strength. Um, no offense, all love and respect. When really skinny people ask you how many dips or pull-ups you can do, I typically answer with, shut up, because what they're trying to do is get to a conclusion where they can do more of those things than you. But if I can come up to you, pick you up with one arm and throw you through a window, I don't really give a shit how strong for your weight you are. Motherfucker. And if I'm being quite serious, I'm just no good at pull-ups and dips, so I'm embarrassed and I'm really just lashing out. So you're watching it. This is the RP Hypertrophy app. Removes all uncertainty and makes the training process precisely defined. Choose your pre-made workout plan from dozens available in the app, plug in your weights, and the app takes care of the rest for months of productive training. Ready? Click on the link in the description of this video to get started. When navigating the gym, here are some potential red flags to keep an eye out for. When he says he doesn't go past 90 on bench press because it's bad for your shoulders. This dude doesn't eat pussy and he makes you shower before sex. <laughs> Joel Seedman, he's talking about you. <laughs> when someone says you don't need to hit arms directly, because you hit him on chest and back. I'm gonna beat Dom to this one. Someone says you don't need to hit arms directly. That means they have dog shit small arm genetics and they abandoned the idea of training arms. Let's see what Dom has to say. These are conspiracy theorists who think training buys and tries is a plot by big arm to get you to spend more time in the gym. Bro, if my arms grew from just blinking, I would still hit arms every day. Yes. You think the only reason I lift is to grow? No, I lift. So I don't feel so empty inside. <laughs> and the ultimate way to fix the emptiness is to have bigger arms. Guys, there is no question in the universe to which big arms is not at least a big part of the answer. Prove me wrong in the comments. People who use the Smith machine as a leg press. I actually don't understand this at all. I've seen this dozens of times, the Smith machine leg press. It's a dog shit angle. You're insanely unstable. Scott, how much do you trust that your feet aren't gonna slip from a fucking barbell? Oh my God, that's just gonna come down. What the fuck? Leg, it's gonna split your shit open and crack your asshole open. Fuck all that. It's just like going way out of your way for just a by no means clear benefit at all. I just don't get it. Maybe I'm in the wrong. Maybe it could work somehow, but I gotta be honest, man. If you're doing this, you're spending so much effort on balance, you're not training closer to failure or you're not using any kind of heavy load or any combination of the two, straight up. I don't care how much this targets your glutes or your quads. If you do this exercise, you look like a dude training to get pegged. What exactly is wrong with getting pegged? Folks, there's still more video to come. If you chick doing this exercise, it means she's training for her free trip to Dubai. <laughs> but how, is it really free? Not really. You pay in other ways. Damn, dude, what's up with that girl? Scott, are you seeing that? What up, baby? Is that is that Photoshop or? Oh, in the picture. Yeah. Looks shoppy. Yeah, looks shoppy. It is definitely like Emirates business class. She's sitting. In What's up, you need a spot? <laughs> I think he crept in there. Folks, Dom Mazzetti is a person you can learn real shit from. Yeah, you can come on this channel and learn science and lifting and how to get in better shape, but it isn't going to teach you how to be a man. That is not what we claim on this channel, and it is absolutely not going to happen. Do you want to learn philosophical shit and how to deal with adult situations? I actually have another channel. Just It's called Just Mike Isratel, and it's about progress and AI and thinking. That's also going to teach you brainy shit, but will it teach you to be a grown man and how to really be alpha in the gym in the best way possible? No. But what does Dom Mazzetti's content teach you that? Arguably, that's the only thing it teaches you, and arguably, that's the only thing you ever need to learn. Folks, Dom Mazzetti is someone you need to check out ASAP. I would recommend the following. Stop everything you're doing, quit your job, watch all of his content that he's ever put out, and then reconsider re-architecting your entire life based exclusively on that content. Sounds good? Awesome. Folks, I've been Dr. Mike, and I'll see you next time. Does he get a rating? Okay. No, how are we gonna rate Dom Mazzetti? Dom Mazzetti gets an infinity out of negative infinity. Does that even math? Yeah, that's a perfect rating. Good enough for me. Good enough for you guys. Dom Mazzetti gets a rating of a pimp out of boss. 
out of 10. Think about that. And I'll see you next time. All right, that was really fun. I feel dominant. I don't know if that's true. This video here, though, might have some interesting things for you. Go click on it. See you next time.